Science. The recent announcement that outdoor air pollution is carcinogenic to humans has caused huge reactions worldwide. The evaluation of the International Agency for Research on Cancer is driven by findings from large epidemiologic studies of millions of people living in Europe, North and South America and Asia. Predominant sources of outdoor air pollution are transportation, power generation, industrial and agricultural emissions and residential heating and cooking. To better understand the problem, Euronews interviewed one of the authors of the report, scientist Donna Loomis. Our first question concerned the location of the most polluted areas in the world. The air in China and India is known to be very polluted, but surprisingly, the air in North Africa is too. In China and in India, much of what we see is due to coal burning. It's industry and all the industrial development that's taking place in those countries. Uh, here in northern Africa, of course, it's mostly desert with few people, and the um, particulate pollution that we see there is from wind-blown desert dust. So it's quite different in character than the pollution that's coming from industry. Loomis added that desert dust is not as dangerous as other sources of air pollution. But according to an Italian study, it does produce fine particles and can cause a wide range of health problems, such as respiratory diseases. He said the situation in Europe is very variable, with heavy pockets of pollution in certain areas and other cleaner regions. In Europe, the main sources today are uh, related to transport, that is uh, vehicles, uh, airplanes, uh, and so on. Uh, it used to be industry, um, and today if you go to China or India, it is industry because those are the countries that are industrializing much as Europe did uh, 200 years ago. Of course, it's a problem that politicians and the authorities are mainly charged with solving. But what can we, as citizens, do to protect ourselves from this pollution? You know, air pollution really is the classic public health problem because the air belongs to everybody. We all breathe the same air. And so one person can't do very much to improve the quality of their own air. Uh, you can cycle to work. Uh, you can reduce your use of fossil fuel, but it doesn't help you very much. It helps the community. Um, so it's good if everybody does those things, but it's also important for people to be aware of the problem, to recognize that it's a collective problem, and to expect solutions at the governmental and international level. The most recent IARC data indicates that in 2010, 223,000 of the deaths from lung cancer worldwide were the result of air pollution. In your study, you talk of the many thousands of deaths caused by air pollution. But how can you be sure that this really is the cause of these deaths? That's a really important question. And in fact, we can't be sure. What we do is use statistical models to try to estimate the number of deaths that are due to a variety of different causes, air pollution, other environmental pollutions, cigarette smoking, using data about large populations from epidemiologic studies. So it's, it's an estimate, but we think it's a good estimate. A greater consciousness of the dangers linked to the air we breathe every day is clearly needed. Authorities will doubtless be required to act on these findings before it's too late.